Hey friends, welcome back. So a new study compared time-restricted feeding versus a low-carbohydrate diet versus the combination of a low-carb diet and time-restricted feeding. And I thought it would be important to sort of unpack the differences in the different arms of the study. Remember, three different arms of the study. And look at the outcomes here and talk about the differences with early time-restricted feeding versus late time-restricted feeding and talk about the addition of combining the TRF with a low-carb diet in people who have pre-existing metabolic dysfunction. Part of the inclusion criteria in this study, which involved over 140 subjects, was the diagnosis of metabolic syndrome. So um, I think that's important, and I think yeah, this study was really well done. Some of the images here, this was published in Cell Reports Metabolism. The title of the paper is... Time-restricted eating with or without a low-carb diet reduces visceral fat and improves metabolic syndrome, a randomized trial that was conducted by researchers and investigators in China. And essentially what they found is the arm of the study that led to the most favorable changes in both visceral and subcutaneous adipose tissue will define and characterize the differences between those fat subtypes and the best improvements in proxies linked with metabolic syndrome such as a reduction in, in blood pressure, reductions in triglycerides, improvements in HDL, and also changes in glucose metabolism, including the HOMA IR score, fasting insulin, and fasting glucose. So a really interesting study. Let's dive into it. So the key points here is the combination of a low-carb diet and time-restricted feeding led to greater increases in both subcutaneous and visceral fat loss, as well as reductions in fasting glucose, insulin, triglycerides, more than just TRF alone and more than just a low-carb diet alone. What's interesting about this study that was 12 weeks in duration is the carbohydrate allowance in the low-carb diet was 120 grams a day, which by most people is not low-carb at all. That's more of a moderate-carb diet, but I think that's helpful for some people because you know people like their carbs it's winter there's tubers there's root vegetables there's butternut squashes potatoes all those things are in season right now and we've talked a lot about carbohydrate personalization based upon your activity level so i think it's cool that again the low carb arm of the study was actually even moderate carb which i think some people might like and what's also interesting here is the study subjects were not instructed to increase their physical activity. Essentially, they were instructed to maintain whatever they were currently doing. So that was a variable that was fixed. And I think that's even more exciting. I would imagine that if you had a third arm of the study that was low carb, TRF, and exercising, you would see even more significant improvements in these cardiometabolic parameters as well as visceral and subcutaneous fat loss. Another important differentiator here that I think is, is important to recognize is the investigators gave the study subjects the flexibility as to whether or not they wanted to do an early time-restricted feeding window. Again, the window was eight hours in both different arms of the study or a later window starting between 12 p.m. and ending at 8 p.m. And again, the, the early arm of the study, and this is a classic early time-restricted feeding window, was eight to four versus 12 to eight, okay? So I think it's important that, and again, there was equal subjects in, in both of these different arms of the time-restricted feeding protocol, but this is where personalization comes in. If you have young children, I think it's gonna be hard for you to have your last meal at 4 p.m. It's just, kids are just now getting off school in most uh, parts of the world around that time. You have activities and things like that, and, and most families wanna have dinner together as a family. And if you're okay feeding your children and not eating, that's fine for you based upon whatever medical stuff you have going on. But having that flexibility, and there were subtle differences uh, within groups, but it wasn't significant. However, we're going to talk about why you might want to eat earlier and start your fast earlier, okay? So before we get into all these different things, I just want to say thank you for being here. Thanks for hitting that like button. If you're enjoying the content, you know what to do. Please share this video and leave a comment below. It actually goes a long way. If you're listening in iTunes, we really appreciate you over there and Spotify as well. So thanks for sharing this information. And we're talking a lot about fasting and the benefits of fasting and low carb diets. And so I wanna just let you know about berberine hydrochloride and the new fasting accelerator by Myoscience Nutrition. This is a natural supplement that includes berberine hydrochloride in high concentrations of a purified form, along with synergistic nutrients, alpha lipoic acid and biotin. So this can be helpful to kickstart your fast. And we're gonna talk about why fasting earlier, meaning starting your fast around four to 6 p.m. or even 8 p.m. And a lot of people think of, oh, I start my fast in the morning. Okay, that's an old way to think about it. You actually start your fast at your last meal. That's when fasting starts, that's time zero. 
So this is a great time to consider taking something like Berberine Fasting Accelerator by Myoscience. We actually have a recent review that was just published over at myoscience.com by Mary. She says, bye-bye midnight snacking. I have zero desire to snack after dinner. This was a problem before. Also, despite an uber difficult five months with half of the workouts that she wanted to do uh, and one month no workouts due to mild challenges with an injury, I have not gained any weight. And so what she said is that taking the Berberine Fasting Accelerator has helped curb some of those evening food cravings, which can be problematic for people because you get more insulin resistant as the day goes on. So if you're also consuming more you know, sugary, hyper palatable foods at night, it's more likely that that might get stored as body fat. So you can check out many of the other reviews over at Myoscience and even save using the code podcast at checkout. Again, the URL is Myoscience, M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com, Myoscience with an X.com. Save with the code podcast on the Berberine Fasting Accelerator. Okay, let's get into all the details here about the differences between the early time restricted feeding group, the TRF group, and then the low carb group. Um, What we're going to lean upon here is figure two. And what I want to focus on here is body fat mass changes, because that's what you want to know. Like, how can I lose fat, right? So what you see here is within figure two, it's diagram F talks about the body fat mass differences. And this was statistically significant between Pairing low-carb plus TRF versus just TRF or low-carb alone, you see a more significant reduction in body fat mass. And then even more importantly than just overall body fat mass loss, although that is important, is specifically the visceral fat loss with the the combination of low-carb and TRF. And you see the greatest reduction in the combination group, okay, in visceral fat. Now, I don't need to tell you, but visceral fat is more pro-inflammatory. Visceral fat is linked with cardiovascular disease, with cancer, with all sorts of different conditions that are metabolically unhealthy. So that's very important. You also see a more significant reduction in waist circumference, but although the between group differences um, were not statistically significant, And then you see the waist to hip ratio was statistically significant. So that's important. So everything moved in the right direction. Unfortunately, muscle mass proxies and strength was not assessed in this particular study, but I think that that's important there. Also going on here was the metabolic changes that are important here. And what you see is the HOMA IR score. This is a composite score that looks at fasting glucose, fasting insulin, and so forth. And the combination group, TRF plus low carb, saw the greatest degree in changes favorably with the HOMA IR score, as well as triglycerides. We're going to focus a lot on triglycerides very soon as it relates to cardiovascular disease. But the more sensitive and readily accessible biomarkers that you can follow when it comes to cardiometabolic health is your triglycerides. This is going to change arguably the fastest. um, And that was more significantly reduced in the combination group. Again, combination means low carb plus time restricted feeding. And then you see the greatest improvement in the the ratio between triglycerides and HDL. TG to HDL ratio is much more sensitive and specific and indicative of cardiovascular health compared to just looking at LDL cholesterol. Um, Most family medicine doctors and, and frontline healthcare workers like They've been trained to look at your LDL cholesterol, but as we're going to talk about very soon, your LDL cholesterol can actually increase as you get more metabolically healthy, which is counterintuitive. You think like, well, if I'm losing weight and I'm fasting and I'm exercising, but my LDL is going up, I must be doing something wrong. That is actually, a lot of studies find this to be true. And so that's why we should be steering the conversation and the clinical focus to look more at visceral fat loss, waist to hip ratio triglyceride reduction in the ratio between the triglycerides and the HDL, okay? Okay, now why is all this stuff important and why even care about going low carb and compressing your feeding window in an early time-restricted feeding protocol? Well, the authors say fasting might improve glycemic control as a result of the metabolic switch from the liver-derived glucose to adipose cell-derived ketones occurring when switching from a fed to fasted state. And it might induce nutritional ketosis, decrease fat accumulation, and increase insulin sensitivity. So again, this metabolic switching that we've talked about is important. And that so-called metabolic switching, again, relying on glucose for fuel, switching to more predominant, relying upon ketones and or fat for fuel, might be accelerated by combining low-carb with time-restricted feeding. So they talk about that. And 
Again, what about the timing of this? Early time-restricted feeding? Again, the window here, study subjects were given the option to eat between 8 in the morning and stop eating at 4 in the afternoon or start eating at noon and stop eating at 8. Um, they were given the option and equal numbers joined both those different groups. The, the researchers say previous studies have shown that both early time-restricted feeding and regular time-restricted feeding improved multiple indicators of cardiovascular health. However, several studies show that, that just garden variety time-restricted feeding show conflicting results with body weight. And so I just wanted to kind of share this with you because if you're doing fasting, but you fast all day and you bookend your day with food and you haven't lost weight, just consider starting your fast earlier in the evening and eat earlier in the day, okay, instead. And that is known as early time-restricted feeding, okay? So one option would, would be, say, eating between 10 and 6 or eating between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. So figure out what works for you. This is where you can kind of custom tailor this. Are you physically active? When do you exercise? Do you have family? All of this. If you're um, a very social person and go out to dinner and so on, you know, a more appropriate feeding pattern for you might be 12 to 8. It might be something like that. And that's perfectly okay, so long as you're making progress on, on that, okay? Now, why would it be that early time-restricted feeding would be a little bit more favorable than, say, eating between 12 and 8? Well, the thermic effect of food and insulin sensitivity and beta cell function is better earlier in the morning than at night because the body is optimally, from a circadian rhythm standpoint, primed to ingest food earlier in the morning. Now, your gut, as well as every other organ in your body, is influenced by your circadian clock system. And it turns out that from gastrointestinal motility, hydrochloric acid release, bile acid release, the peristaltis, all of this, is really primed earlier in the day between the hours of like 10 and 2. So it makes more sense that you're you're getting most of your calories during that time of the day. And also that might increase overall fat oxidation throughout the day. And so that's, I think, important to recognize. But the scientists go on to say that lipids were also affected by meal timing, which might be due to the increase in fat oxidation in early time-restricted feeding. So for the participants who found it easier to skip breakfast than dinner, the latter protocol, eating between 12 and 8, might be um, more acceptable in, in cultures, right? So if you're from Brazil, if you're Colombian, you're Mexican, you like to go out and, and, and have dinner with friends, you know, pick, pick the 12 to 8. Don't try to force a, a square peg in a round hole and eat at 8 in the morning and cut it off at 4, right? If you can't do that, then, then do what works for you. I think it's important. So having that flexibility, I think, is, is really important. Okay. Now, what sort of outcomes can we expect from just time-restricted feeding? The scientists say that previous studies and clinical trials have evaluated the weight reduction of efficacy of time-restricted eating in individuals with metabolic syndrome. And what they found is that just by doing this and, and compressing your feeding window to a 10-hour time block there can lead to a 3% weight reduction in various improvements in cardiometabolic risk parameters. A recent trial showed that an eight-hour time-restricted feeding protocol decreased body weight of obese individuals by over 2.6% in just three months. So I mean, that, that's important. Now, we talked about you know the differences there between early and late time-restricted feeding. We talked about body compositional changes, but let's furthermore talk about the visceral fat here and what they found. The scientists say, our results show that a low-carb diet decreased subcutaneous fat without affecting visceral fat, while time-restricted feeding and the combination of low-carb diet significantly decreased subcutaneous fat as well as visceral fat. Accumulating evidence indicates that visceral fat is crucially associated with many aspects of metabolic syndrome, including hypertension, dyslipidemia, that would be characteristic of the elevation in LDL cholesterol and also triglycerides, glucose intolerance, and insulin resistance. And it is more closely linked to inflammatory and oxidative stress biomarkers than subcutaneous fat. Our results suggest that compared with a low-carb diet, time-restricted eating might yield more benefits on cardiometabolic outcomes in adults with metabolic syndrome. All right. Now, I've already kind of hinted at this, but I want to mention it again. It's recognized that time-restricted feeding can actually increase LDL cholesterol. So, when you go to your primary health provider after you've made sweeping lifestyle changes to both, and you're exercising more, you're eating better, you're cutting out the sugar, and, and you're compressing your feeding window, but your LDL cholesterol goes up, so you're, they're advising you go on a statin. Just remember, tell them, this is normal. This is actually what happens when your body is becoming more efficient at utilizing, making that metabolic switch because LDL cholesterol 
is actually transporting more fats to potentially your brain into the periphery of your body. And th those fats can be oxidized for fuel. So this is totally normal. So what they say is, we observe that a low-carb diet alone and combined with TRF can actually increase LDL cholesterol after three months, which is consistent with several studies. But it's important to recognize that the LDL subfractions increased, meaning that these LDL particles, if you do subfraction analysis, are actually more buoyant, more big and fluffy, and not more easily oxidizable because they're bigger, right? The smaller, dense LDL particles are easily oxidized and engulfed by macrophages in the endothelial lining and so forth. Okay, so it's important to focus on this, and that is the triglycerides. And the scientists say the triglyceride to HDL ratio is a well-known predictor for cardiovascular disease. A reduced triglyceride to HDL cholesterol ratio might be attributed to decreased cholesterol ester transfer protein activity. So CETP, you might remember in the early 2000s, this was a big target of uh, pharmaceutical companies trying to go after the origin of where cholesterol is transported and so forth. But these were kind of a failure when it comes to pharmacotherapy. However, but metabolic changes that are associated with exercise and compressing or feeding when on a low carb diet can actually Im improve this CETP activity. So that's important to recognize. And certainly last but not least, blood pressure declined significantly uh, in the combination group. And they say, in addition, only the combination intervention significantly decreased blood pressure in our study. Generally moderate weight loss, like five to 10% body weight, can lead to pretty significant changes in blood pressure a systolic reduction of five millimeters of mercury and a diastolic blood pressure reduction of around three millimeters of mercury and so forth. And they showed that within this study that the combination group experienced the greatest reduction in blood pressure, which I think is really important. So what's the takeaway here, friends? Well, just compressing your feed feeding window, doing nothing else, not changing your diet, not changing your activity leads to favorable metabolic improvements. But if you compress your feeding window, preferably in an early time-restricted feeding manner, and you cut out the carbs in your diet or significantly reduce them, that is going to be optimal. You can expect to receive even more changes in your body fat, visceral fat, and cardiometabolic health. So I think it's important that we share these research articles with you. That's why we made this video. As always, thanks for tuning all the way in. Thanks for sharing this with a friend or family who might benefit from this information. And I would love to know what you have found to be helpful in the comments below. I'll put links to this article. Again, the article that we were talking about here is time-restricted eating with or without low-carb carbohydrate diet reduces visceral fat and improves metabolic syndrome, a randomized trial. All right, friends, we'll catch you on a future one down the road. Have an awesome day. Bye now.